Hey guys, it's Jazzy. I forgot my name. <laughs> hey guys, it's Jazzy right here and I'm back with another video. Today I'm doing Sally's birth chart reading. If you guys like birth chart readings, just hit me up in the you know in the description box. My email is in the description box and all the all the my social media is down there so you can hit me up. Um but yeah, we're doing Sally's birth chart. Get these birth chart readings now while it's free because next month I'm going to start charging. So get them now while it's free. Um, so I got Sally's birth chart here. And Sally is a Gemini just like me. In fact, your birthday is five days before mine. Cool. I Gemini videos coming too. So you're going to look out for those. So... Let me show you your chart. And I really was looking at your chart. Your chart is very, very similar to mine, if not the same. Actually, very similar. So this chart will be a breeze for me to do. And so your sun's in Gemini, your moon is Virgo, your Mercury's in Gemini, your Venus is in Taurus, your Mars is in Gemini, and your ascendant is in Libra. See, I'm just noticing these two. Your Mercury and Venus, if they were switched, your chart would be like literally just like mine. I said my my moon is Pisces and my Mars is Taurus. So yeah, if everything was just switched, you would literally have my chart. Ah, I forgot to show you something else. So over here is your masculine and your feminine energy. I will explain those to you at the end. All right. Can you see me? I hope you can see me. Okay, so let's get started with your sun. So your sun is Gemini. Gemini is a very masculine sign. Um, its element is air. Uh, it is a mutable sign. So you have fixed, mutable, and cardinal. Fixed is Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, and Scorpio. Fixed is kind of like their moves are calculated. They kind of know what they want to do. And there's really no stopping them unless they're going to stop themselves from doing it. There's really no need to keep up. You kind of know what a fixed sign is going to do. Um, mutable is Gemini, Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius. I had to think for a second. Mutable, mutable signs are the total opposite of fixed signs. They don't know. I don't want to say they don't know what they want to do. It's more like... They don't have a plan, so they kind of just wing everything that they do. Um, like, for example, like with a fixed sign, let's say a fixed sign is going out to run errands. Like, a fixed sign is strictly going to run errands. They're not making any extra stops unless they plan on doing it. Mutable signs, it's like, we'll run errands. And then it's like, well, since we're out and since there's a McDonald's right here, let's stop at McDonald's and get some food. That's not even in their plan. They don't even have a plan. They're just literally winging everything that they do. So you have to keep up with a mutable sign. Cardinal is Capricorn, Aries, Cancer, and Libra. These guys put in action, put in work. These are the type of people, I don't want to say they work, they, they work, they like to work alone, but they tend to get a lot of work done when they are working solo. Though Libra can work with others. So they just love to put that hard work in, you know, all about that action. And the best way to describe it is like you have the papers, the, the, the first, second, and third draft, which is the final draft. The first draft would be the, the mutable sign because you don't know what you're going to write. And then the second draft will be the fixed sign because you, you pick the subject and now you're sticking to it. But then the cardinal sign is putting in the extra work so you can get a, so you can get a good grade on the paper or good marks on the paper. So, now that we got that out of the way. So it is a mutable sign. Its plan is Mercury. Mercury is the plan of communication. Um, and it's polar is Sagittarius. They say you're supposed to marry your polar opposite. I think that's BS, honestly, because I've tried dating Sagittarius. It never works. So I don't know if that's 100% true. I think somebody just made that one up. I don't know. Um, and its likable trait will be responsiveness. Bes Okay, <laughs> so I'm a Gemini, so this would be easy to explain. Um, Geminis are just free-flowing people. We like to have a good time, have fun. We're all about positive energy. Um, when we have a good time, everyone else has a good time. Um, really, Gemini, it really just depends on the day of the week. People say that we're like two-faced and we're fake. And 
I, I think it's bull crap when people say it. <laughs> if we tend to switch up, it's because the other person switched up. So it's like we have this this notion that if we care about you, we're gonna be faithful to you and tell you the truth. But the minute you lie, it's like then we think why should we take why should we keep being real being real with you if you're gonna be fake? So that's why we tend to switch up. People don't understand that, but only Gemini's and maybe other air signs will understand that, but or at least other mutable mutable signs will understand that, but they don't get us. <laughs> Um, I would say the downside to being a Gemini, actually, I think it's a good thing, but depending on the circum circumstances, it may not be a good thing. We are so unpredictable, and we don't plan anything. That could be a good thing, because I know with me, when I plan stuff, things never go as planned. I hate plan. I never plan things. I, I can say, okay, today I'm going to study all day, and I don't even pick up a book. And I'm mad because I sat there and planned that and it didn't even go through. It has to be something that comes into my head that says, you know what, let me let me turn this computer off. Let me get off my phone and start studying, you know. So it could be a good thing or a bad thing that we're all over the place. Um, I want to go into the other like elements of Gemini, like the other sides of Gemini because you have a lot of Gemini here. So for your sun sign, you're a fun person. You're you're literally the best sign ever because Gemini's are the best sign ever. <laughs> no, but you're you, you have a good heart. Gemini's are good-hearted people, despite what people believe. Gemini's love to have fun, and we are like the most friendly people you'll ever meet. We will we don't judge anybody, anyone. We're friends with everyone, everyone, because we just love. We, we're friends. We're friendly. You know, we love people sometimes. Depends on it depends on the day. We love people, okay? <laughs> so your moon is in Virgo. Now if you Mer, Virgo, my bad. Moon is how we express our emotions. So Virgo is a feminine sign, it's an earth sign. It's also mutable. Um its ruler is also Mercury. And it's Polar opposites, Pisces. And this is what I love about Virgos. They are humble. They are the second best sign. So any Virgos watching this, I love y'all. Virgos are great. Um, Virgos are very humble. They are very laid back, chill for the most part. Um, Virgos are perfectionists. So they really take their time with their craft. Um, Beyonce and Michael Jackson are like the prime examples of what Virgos are. And when you insult their craft or just insult them in the worst way possible, Virgo will lose its cool. Lose their cool. I say it's cool. Virgo will lose their cool. Like Virgos are like really chill until you really come for them. When you come for them, Virgos might pull out a knife. <laughs> you know? That it takes a lot for a Virgo, Virgo to get angry, but when you personally attack them, and, and, and it's, especially when you're accusing them of something that's not true, oh, they're coming for your neck after that. And if you come for people that people that they care about, they're coming for your neck too. So, I'm just saying. But they're pretty much laid back and reserved for the most part. Um, so, how does this apply to Moon? Well, Virgos are sensitive. They're sensitive, so you're probably a sensitive Gemini. I'm an emotional Gemini. You're just sensitive. Like, my, I'm, my moon is Pisces, so I'm crying all the time. Virgos, they just kind of just, sometimes they get their feelings hurt easily when it comes to, like, love and things like that. So it's like, I don't know. But I love Virgos. Literally, like, when I look up Virgos, literally no one has anything bad to say about Virgos. So I don't know. They might be the best sign. I don't know. <laughs> um... So your Mercury is Gemini. So let's talk about Gemini and communication because they that goes together because that's their planet. Gemini's are the best communicators. We just love to talk. We can talk about anything. We can talk about life. We can talk about spirituality. We can talk about school. We can talk about relationships, love, uh, haters. <laughs> we can talk about sex. We can talk about everything. 
everything under the sun because we just love to talk and we're not going to judge anybody's opinions though gemini can be opinionated we can still respect other people's opinions like a lot of people cannot do that gemini's can do that we are literally just we just love to vibe with people so that's like the best thing i can say about mercury and gemini like it's it, it works out and, it, and if your virgo was in mercury too like if, if it was mercury like like if you're gemini like if I can't talk if your mercury sign was Virgo it would be the same thing so either way it's still good so your Venus is in Taurus so Taurus is a feminine sign it's an earth sign it's fixed um it's planned as Venus which that works because it's the plan to love and that's Taurus's planet or if it's in Libra it would have worked um it's polar opposite is Scorpio and it's likable trait is dependable. So Tauruses in general, um, they are very patient people. They, you know, like to take their time with things such as relationships and friendships and projects and stuff. Um, Tauruses are very dependable people, very loyal. They are loyal to you until you give them a reason not to be. The downside to be having a Taurus in your chart you can be stubborn at times. You can tell a Taurus one plus one is two. If Taurus does not believe that one plus one is two, that one plus one equals a zebra, that's what they believe. You cannot change a Taurus's mind. There is no point in arguing with a Taurus because they're not going to back down from a fight. They're not going to change their beliefs. So you're somebody, when it comes to love, you know what you want and you're not changing. So you want a partner that's dependable. Tauruses love to have deep conversations. So you want someone who can have a deep conversation. You want somebody who has their life on track, who has goals and this and that and the third. Someone who's loyal. Okay? Someone who loves their family and things like that. That's what you look for in a partner. That's what you look for in a partner. I actually like Tauruses. They, they, people say Taurus is like the opposite of being an Aries. It's literally the opposite. And you, if you know about Aries, then like Taurus is the opposite. So you're a very you're a patient lover. You're not an aggressive lover. Lover. Taurus is not aggressive lovers either. But I'm just saying, Taurus Aries is like everything is quick for them, and Taurus it kind of happens gradually. At, you know, as time goes on. So okay, now your Mars is in Gemini. Your Mars is your drive, your your work ethic, your anger, your sex. Now let's talk about your work ethic. Geminis have the worst work ethic ever. It's not as bad as Sagittarius, but it's pretty bad. Because, ooh, excuse me, because Geminis are like supposed, we're, we're the youngest of the Zodiac. So we're, our minds are like, 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 we have a child's mind. You know how would a child... They have the shortest attention span. Gemini's have a short attention span. We can start something, but then in the middle of it, we're going to want to move on to something else because we're like children when it comes to that. We don't, I don't want, I don't want to say we don't like to work. If it interests us enough, we'll stick to it. But if it gets boring after a while, we're going to want to move on. So you probably switch jobs a lot. <laughs> you probably switch jobs, um, switch jobs a lot. I can't talk. You probably switch jobs a lot. You probably, um, you can probably work with people, but only people who like to have fun. Like, you don't like serious stick in the mud people. Um, you could probably work a physical job, or if you just sit down all day, as long as it's fun, you could probably do it. Um, like, for example, a Gemini can never work in a cubicle. That's not fun. A Gemini could, because a Gemini has to be able to socialize. If you can't socialize, Gemini is going to hate that job. And she's gonna, he or she's going to find it very boring. Um, when it comes to anger, Geminis have a razor sharp tongue. We have razor sharp tongues. So, which means if you get us angry, we will say, we will say, it's like Scorpio. We will say the worst thing to you. And later on, that person is going to want to fight us because not only did we say the worst thing, but we, we, we exposed some truth. But Gemini's, it depends on the mood and the day. 
So it's like people say Gemini's are bipolar. No, it depends on the mood that we're in. If we wake up in a great mood, then we're going to have a great day. If we wake up on the wrong side of the bed, then yes, we're going to have a bad day. All day. <laughs> All day. We're going to have a bad day. So it really just depends on the mood. And if you push us there, or we're going to do things to hurt your feelings. That's just how Gemini's are. I hate to say that, but that's just the truth. You really have to push our buttons for us to get there. Sex-wise. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Because all Gemini's are not the same. They say Gemini's are not sexual. I disagree with that, but... I feel like you can be. Gemini's can be. Again, it depends on the mood. It's, and we don't. And another thing Gemini's hate is repetition. We hate for things to be repeated. We like to try new things, and, and, and explore, and play games, and things like that. Yeah, we don't like repetition. So if you're like, if you have a partner that does the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over it's going to get boring, and Gemini's going to leave. It's just that simple. Um, so, yeah, when it comes, that's pretty much what everything we do. Like, we don't like routine. We do things differently every day, you know. You probably switch your hair around all the time, your hairstyle all the time, or switch your look up all the time. Because we hate doing the same things over and over. We hate it. Now, your ascendant is in Libra. That's also an air sign, which means you're double air sign. <laughs> so you're like a balanced Gemini. Um, your duality is masculine. I said it's an air sign. It's cardinal. It's planets Venus. Polar is Aries and likable charm. I mean likable traits, charm. So your ascendant is how you express your sun sign. So being a Libra, you believe in communication. You believe in keeping things balanced. And you tend to see both sides of a situation. Um, sometimes your scales can tip over, but that's okay because Libra knows how to get them back balanced. Um, Libras can be a bit sensitive, unlike Gemini. <laughs> they can be a bit sensitive, but it's okay, you know, we all need a little sensitivity in our lives. So you're a Gemini, you're a Gemini who likes to keep things in check and, you know, balance and things like that. So. You're a double earth you're a double air sign. I've never seen that before. You're double air. So you're in you're a real air sign. Like you're air. You're literally air. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your masculine and your feminine energy. So your masculine is seven and your feminine is three. Now you do have more masculine energy, it doesn't mean you're trying to be a man and it doesn't make you less of a woman to have three. It just means that you're more active. You you're more into like I said in previous videos you probably have a job that requires you to be active. If you don't work a job that doesn't that, that requires you to be active, like if you work a job that requires you to sit down all day, you hate that job because you want to be up moving around. You probably work out. Not saying you do, but you probably do. Just you're active. You're always on the go, always on the move. Now, because your inner your feminine levels are three, you do have a you can be nurturing at times and you can be sensitive at times and things like that, but your masculine is seven, so you tend to be more assertive and more aggressive in situations, which is okay. Because the goal is you want to keep it balanced, but now you know what you need to work on. This is not a bad thing at all. Sometimes you need to be aggressive. But it, this just gives you like an idea of what you need to work on, or what you should work on, rather. Some people are just naturally balanced, and some people got to work on it, and it's okay. It's all right. You'll get there. But that's all I wanted to say. Um, so if you, I hope this resonates with you. Um, if you guys want more birth chart readings, um, or you want to know your life path number, everything is in the description box. And I'll see you guys, and I'll see you guys. Bye!